an old man in a Seattle neighborhood had dedicated years to feeding a flock of the area's local crows. He was left in absolute shock one day when he discovered the surprising way the crows had decided to repay his kindness. Stuart Dahlquist found himself irritated as he stormed out from his house one morning, frustrated by the relentless cawing noises that had been echoing throughout his peaceful neighborhood. Welcome to Wonderbot Animals. This had been going on for weeks, with the crows making an unbearable amount of noise, wrecking his serenity. That eventful day, the intensity of the crow's noisy outbursts reached a peak and Stuart had finally reached his threshold for tolerance. He marched across his yard, a look of utter frustration etched on his face. As he neared the source of the noise pollution, he caught sight of two young crows that were huddled on the ground, their meek chirping almost drowned out by the enthusiastic calls of their parents. Out of sheer frustration, Stuart grumbled, his tone teeming with irritation. Can't you noisy birds take your racket somewhere else? Even in his frustration, Stuart couldn't help but feel his heart soften as he took in the sight of the vulnerable chicks that were shivering in the grass. They seemed so delicate and innocent, their eyes wide with fear, which was a sight that fostered compassion within Stuart. He moved towards the scene, only for the parent crows to swoop down towards him, warning him off with their sharp beaks. Stuart found himself backing off in surprise, momentarily forgetting his annoyance as the critical nature of the situation dawned on him. These birds weren't just causing noise for no reason, they needed his assistance. With some hesitation, Stuart crouched down beside the frightened chicks, his hands trembling with uncertainty. He had chosen isolation and spent years evading connections with other humans, preferring solitude after the demise of his dear wife. Yet, the sight of the helpless creatures stirred an undeniable sensation of compassion within him. Stuart took a deep breath and gently picked up the shivering chicks, the touch of their soft, downy feathers warm against his hand. He muttered, his voice softer than he had ever imagined, in an attempt to reassure the birds, all right, let's see how we can assist you. Trying to quell the fear that he could feel seeping through the fragile bodies, Stuart immediately stood up, holding the chicks close to his chest, allowing them to take comfort in the sound of his steady heartbeat. However, as he moved toward the tree in his front yard, the parent crows descended towards him in a flurry, with loud, frantic warnings echoing from their beaks. Stuart recoiled slightly, but stood firm, carefully advancing towards the bushy branches that cradled the nest. The climactic screech of the adult crows tore through the silence. Panic washed over him as he struggled to return the fledgling crows home safely. His hands began to quiver slightly, not because of anxiety, but because he felt the weight of this crucial duty. Finally, he managed to nestle the stronger chick into the twigs. Its chirping subsided as it sought comfort in the familiar warmth of its haven. However, before Stuart could prepare the second chick for its journey home, he noticed that it appeared feeble. Its eyes were half closed and breaths were mild. He wondered if he was equipped to handle such a crucial task, a task he hadn't faced before. His wife had always tended to wayward animals. A part of him pondered if the crow was worth saving. After all, it appeared near its final breath. Holding the quivering chick stirred pangs of remorse within him. He could almost hear the gently chiding voice of his wife, a voice reminding him of his once compassionate nature. With a firm sigh, Stuart dismissed his uncertainties, pledging to give his best. On a whim, Stuart scooped up the frail bird, disregarding the upset squawks of the adult crow overhead. He swiftly moved indoors, cradling the chick to his chest. Inside his home, Stuart arranged a temporary nest from a soft towel, cradling the bird in a small box. He adjusted a heat lamp to provide warmth and cautiously provided water to the weak bird using an eyedropper. Over several hours, he anxiously watched as the chick's breathing stabilized while its eyes slowly opened. Stuart woke up throughout the night to make sure the bird remained hydrated and warm. By dawn, the little bird seemed more robust. Its chirping, though feeble, was consistent, a sound that gave Stuart hope. 
it was time to reunite the now stronger chick with its family. He gently carried the revived bird outside with newfound determination. As he approached the tree, the protective crows hushed their cries to a curious chirp. Balancing himself on a small ladder, Stuart gingerly relocated the chick to join its sibling in the nest. The baby crows snuggled together, a sound of content chirping reaching his ears. He ensured to leave a dish with water and bird seed by the foot of the tree, just in case. The day prior, there was quite a commotion amongst the crows, as their defensive instincts naturally kicked in watching Stuart. However, upon seeing their offspring safe back in the nest, their anxiety soon transformed into a newfound realisation. It became clear to Stuart Dahlquist that crows aren't just competent in problem solving and skillful tool use. They also exhibit vast social intelligence. They are known for identifying human faces from a distance and can modify their social bonds based on previous encounters. This intellectual capability is showcased when they bear grudges against perceived adversaries, demonstrating their keen sense of fairness and rationality. Stuart perceived a shift in his status from being a mere human tossing out cat food. He felt that he had earned the status of a guardian to their young ones and a member of their group. The crows grew more attentive towards Stuart whenever he was outside. They maintained a safe distance while making softer core sounds as if communicating with him. It was as if a barrier has been removed, allowing Stuart an insight into their intelligent and closely knit world. Upon witnessing Stuart's valiant act of rescuing their chicks, the crows accepted him into their fold. Since then, Stuart felt a unique connection with the crow family. He started engaging in small talks with them and would occasionally treat them with nuts and dried fruits. Stuart found immense pleasure in having the crows as his company and buddies. He considered himself fortunate to bond closely with these intelligent and sociable birds. The experience enabled him to appreciate the beauty of wildlife even more. They would accompany me on my walks, said Stuart. The crows would descend and perch on the telephone wires above me as I strolled. The male crow would fly right by me, passing within a few feet, almost as if greeting me. Stuart didn't expect any reward for providing food to the crows. He enjoyed the company of these intelligent, friendly birds and considered them like his unusual feathered companions. But his feathered friends had a surprise waiting. After feeding them for over four years, as Stuart stepped outside one morning to scatter some dry cat food for the crows, he noticed something unusual placed at the spot where he usually left their snacks. Initially, he assumed it to be some waste and bent down to clear it. However, upon a closer look, he realised it was a tiny handmade ornament left by his crow friends. It was an impeccably free pull-tab ring from a beverage can, Stuart recalled. The metallic loop had been meticulously inserted through a tiny crimson ceramic pearl, joined to a pine tree sprig with its needle still intact. The assembly was so precise, I initially considered it a quirk rather than something intentional, although it was unusual to discover such a perfectly assembled trinket in my crow family's favourite haunt. Stuart placed this quaint treasure aside, attempting to ignore its peculiar origins. Then, the following day, he found another odd charm in the same location, a soda can ring skillfully threaded onto a twig. That's when the realisation struck. These crows were creating and depositing these handcrafted gifts. Stuart was astounded to see the frequency and intricate detailing of the gifts. It occurred to him that the trinkets transcended mere knick-knacks. The crows were actually creating artwork. As days turned into weeks, Stuart kept discovering more miniature presents from the crows. A twist tie arrayed in a necklace form, a ball composed of grass and twine, an exposed pine tree bark ingeniously aligned into an appealing pattern. It wasn't long before he lost track of the number of items the crows had made for him. I was spellbound, admitted Stuart. He took a while to truly comprehend how extraordinary this situation was. These gifts made entirely out of the crow's own volition, weren't just ordinary items. They were entirely new creations placed as tokenistic offerings. Stuart began to comprehend that these rewards weren't simply material gratuities. Instead, they manifested the crow's genuine appreciation, 
a sincere thank you, not just for the food Stuart would provide, but also for the moments he helped their chicks evade harm. Crows, famous for their excellent memory retention, can recall instances of human benevolence for many years. Though often perceived as malevolent scavengers, crows' capacity for high intelligence, abstract art creation and symbolic gestures shows phenomenal emotional depth and self-awareness. Their actions reveal a level of sentient behaviour often overlooked, Stuart reflects. Stuart takes pride in conserving every tiny artefact the crows gift him, storing it in a unique collection receptacle. To him, these pieces signify the extraordinary bond humans and animals can build when treated with decency and respect. To coexist with this untamed crow family has been an incredible gift, says Stuart. Seeing them return repeatedly, each time making their presence known, is a unique and profound kinship, which is amplified by these remarkable handcrafted presentations. It truly mystifies me. One sunny afternoon, Stuart witnessed an astonishing act from the crows that nearly left him in a daze. It occurred several months after the crows initiated their ritual of leaving handmade gifts. While taking his usual neighbourhood stroll, Stuart was not without the company of his crow compatriots. They flew by him, creating joyful noises as they maintained a steady pace. Waving at them, Stuart observed their smooth flight under the clear spring sky. He then spotted a crow clutching a small, glistening object in its talons. His eyes widened as he saw the item lying on the grass. It was a small, aged silver locket on a long, fragile chain. It was the sort where one could store a cherished photo or a lock of hair. Overwhelmed with emotion, tears welled up in Stuart's eyes as he bent to pick it up. The locket bore a striking resemblance to the one always worn by his dearly departed wife, enclosing a time-worn monochrome image of her as a young lady. Stuart clearly recalled his desperate search for the missing locket shortly after his wife's demise, more than ten years ago. He never did find it and it appeared as though he was now staring at the very same lost locket, lying on the ground as if it was a divine message. With trembling hands, Stuart opened the locket to reveal the very same photo of his wife. Her radiant smile was still lively and vibrant, sparking so many cherished memories. A surge of poignant remembrances submerged Stuart as he stood petrified on the pavement. Could it really be the same locket after all these years? He doubted in disbelief. It couldn't be just another similar piece. It was, without a doubt, his wife's locket, right down to the fine fracture on the silver surface that Stuart remembered so well. Waves of intense emotions overwhelmed Stuart as he held the locket tight. As he gently brushed his fingers along its dull surface, memories of his wife came flooding back. The radiant smile, the cheerful laughter, the unconditional love, all encapsulated in that tiny photo. Having somewhat collected himself, Stuart turned back towards his house. His crow companions followed in tow, with a few flying beside him, seemingly escorting their human friend. As he continued to weep, he held up the precious locket, showing the crows the invaluable gift they had miraculously handed back to him. Staring up at the crows in the sky, he quietly expressed his gratitude to these avian creatures who had mysteriously recovered such a valuable relic from his history. As though comprehending the significance of their actions, the crows' tempo briefly slowed, producing a succession of tenderly melancholic calls. To Stuart, it felt as though they recognised his deep appreciation for retrieving this cherished keepsake. From that moment on, the crows became an unwavering comfort in Stuart's life, filling the familial void left behind by the departure of his dear wife. He eagerly anticipated their routine visits and exchanged core cores with sincere joy, finding a sense of inclusion every time they declared their presence through those unique calls. The crows also appeared to take pleasure in their uncommon bond with Stuart, bestowing handmade tokens such as imaginative twig structures or complexly knitted nests every couple of weeks, perhaps to underscore their regard and affection for him. Has anyone else encountered the remarkable empathic abilities of crows or other animals? Do share your experiences in the comments section below. Remember to hit like and subscribe for more astonishing animal content.